continent of Australia doesn't have any really large mountain ranges. There is a series of hills over on the east coast uh, that provide some relief, top topographic relief. But really, uh, this island continent is surrounded by uh, lots of water, the Pacific Ocean to the east, the Southern Ocean to the south, and then the Indian Ocean to the west. Across the top, we have the Timor Sea and the Arafuro Sea, and um, the Gulf of Carpentaria up, up at the top end. Uh, we have some major ocean currents. In fact, one of the most uh, rapid ocean currents on the planet is the East Australia Current, or EAC. Uh, it um, flows uh, south to north, separating the, um, the Coral Sea to the north from the Tasman Sea to the south, both part of the Pacific Ocean. And then on the west coast, a very unusual south-flowing current, and that's called the Lewin Current. Most places in the world, the west coast uh, have uh, cool water currents flowing towards the poles, in Australia case, the Lewin Current. And then a weak uh, southern Australian current going from west to east across the bottom of Australia. So those are the, the major ocean currents. In terms of the winds, down in the uh, southern ocean, uh, there are these prevailing westerlies. These are uh, very fast moving winds, particularly in the latitudes of the uh, 40s and 50s, the, call them the Roaring 40s and the Furious 50s. Across Australia itself, uh, some westerly winds, but not as not as dramatic as the Southern Ocean. We have uh, southeast trade winds that occur um, uh, seasonally, in the summer in particular, and uh, large cyclones, uh, cyclones that are uh, formed in the, uh, that, that rotate in a clockwise direction, um, impinge the coast. Uh, Hurricane Yazzie, for example, in 2011 hit uh, Queensland and then uh, cyclones on the uh, west coast as well uh, traveling uh, to uh, impinging the coast uh, along there. Now, uh, the other uh, important aspect of, of the climate in Australia is the southern oscillate, uh, the El Nino southern oscillation on the east coast uh, and that's an interannual variability which causes drought and, and flooding. Now, uh, looking across the continent for the river basins, what we see are a couple of, of well, one really large river basin, which is the uh, Murray-Darling Basin, which takes up a lot of the southeast uh, corner of Australia. This Murray-Darling uh, River system is uh, the most extensive by, by a long stretch, because the second and third largest just north here are the Fitzroy and the, the Burdekin, and, and they're really uh, small by comparison. So uh, the rest of the continent is made up of a, a series of very small coastal catchments that uh, flow to the sea, um, and uh, these coastal catchments are, are uh, pretty um, ephemeral, uh, dry up in many cases, uh, depending on whether it's the monsoonal or the um, this is the uh, Tropic of Capricorn and uh, what, what we see is to the north we have um, a very uh, very much a uh, monsoonal rains that occur, so these are monsoons which are summer rains versus to the south we have um, winter rains, Mediterranean climate. But 
what what happens here in the center of Australia is a large desert. Uh, so we have a big evaporative basin. None of the uh, water that 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 occasionally does rain uh, in this part of Australia makes it to the sea, including uh, Lake Eyre uh, over here, which seasonally fills up and uh, with water, but most of the time it is dry. In terms of uh, impacts on the water cycle, uh, the the large uh, thirsty Australian cities uh, like uh, Melbourne and, and uh, Sydney and Brisbane, uh, Adelaide and Perth are uh, uh, trap uh, water in dams and and use uh, various diversions to uh, keep the water supply. Now we're moving into particularly in Perth, which is getting drier and drier. We end up with um, desalinization plants. Another problem of uh, Water is the irrigation uh, leaves behind the salts. We end up with this dry land salinity pattern across uh, southern uh, Western Australia and Victoria and South Australia, and so that's a that's a big issue that uh, we're facing as well. In terms of uh, nutrients, um, we see that the Murray Darling Basin has. Uh, got uh, particularly phosphorus problems, too much phosphorus leading to algal blooms. We also have, um, and which also contaminates the water, we have uh, too much phosphorus in the, the Swan Canning River. We have uh, a very low background of nutrients that enters the Great Barrier Reef, so any agricultural or grazing impacts that enhance the net runoff of nutrients and sediments into the Great Barrier Reef Lagoon can be uh, can cause large impacts. So each of the major cities have uh, nitrogen phosphorus problems as well like Sydney and Brisbane and Melbourne. So we're seeing uh, all kinds of uh, current issues but in addition uh, potential diversions from the tropical rivers of the north um, are posed, and these diversions could be for agriculture or drinking water, uh, they could have large uh, ecological impacts as well. So these are the, the overview of the, this big dry continent of Australia and some of the issues associated with the water.